Russia faces a problem with producing new equipment. It has to decommission and modernize old Soviet weapons, says Andriy Yusov, a representative of the defense intelligence of Ukraine. Still, we are talking about providing modern means, modern weapons, modern equipment. Basically, the enemy is focused on the decommissioning and modernization of old Soviet weapons. It drives, it shoots, but it is still a problem, he said. According to the intelligence officer, Russia has a problem with the production of new equipment, particularly because of sanctions policy. Access to modern electronic systems, modern optics, communication systems. The enemy really has a big problem with all of this, Yusuf added. Back in November last year, the defense intelligence said that Russia was modernizing its KH-22 missiles, which they were converting into KH-32. In the same month, Russian troops allegedly used modified RBK-500 cluster bombs near the village of Staromayorsk, Donetsk region. Rather, this new modification is the modernization of the FAB-3000, in which Russia has probably built a new module. Before modernizing these bombs, Russia used them to bomb Mariupol and in the war in Afghanistan. Western analysts report that Russia has decommissioned weapons accumulated during the Soviet era, but up to 70% of old tanks have not been moved and the rest have been refurbished and passed off as new. The Russians are also removing artillery barrels from old equipment and installing them on self-propelled howitzers. If this continues, Russia will reach a critical point of depletion in 2025. According to most intelligence estimates, Russia lost about 3,000 tanks and 5,000 other armored vehicles in the first two years of the war. The Dutch open source intelligence website Oryx estimates the number of Russian tank losses with photographic or video evidence at 3,235, but suggests that the real figure is much higher. Alexander Goltz, an analyst at the Stockholm Center for East European Studies, says that Russian ruler Vladimir Putin should be grateful to the USSR for the huge stockpiles of weapons that were accumulated during the Cold War. At the start of Russia's invasion, Ukraine's prospects for defending its airspace looked dire. The country's radar coverage was spotty even before its radar stations came under attack. Many drones and cruise missiles flew too low to be seen. But that has changed. As The Economist reports, four days after the invasion began, a group of ambitious Ukrainian developers formed a unit called Technari and developed a system to detect and track Russian air attacks. It is an app and an artificial intelligence model that allows Ukrainian citizens to report objects in the sky with the click of a button. It has proven remarkably effective. The Technari team hopes for even greater success as it begins to process the sounds of potential airborne threats picked up by microphone networks located across Ukraine. The company's work is a small part of a quiet but dramatic Ukrainian experiment in countering air attacks. Several other units already use microphone networks that transmit sounds to Ukrainian air defense operators. These wartime innovations have proven so successful that other countries may soon follow suit, the publication writes. Microphone networks have made significant progress in the past two decades, particularly in protecting Western soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq. But analyzing sound waves for air defense has long been considered impractical. Mary Missy Cummings, a former American fighter pilot, is skeptical of the technology, calling it reading someone's palm. Ukraine's experience has made a difference, says James Hecker, who commands US Air Force in Europe. He describes Ukraine's innovation in acoustic sensing as extraordinary. Compared with radar, Ukrainian microphone networks are cheaper and do not emit signals that Russian forces could detect. And while clever engineering can dramatically reduce an aircraft's radar signature, moving through the air creates sound. Acoustic detection works best at low altitudes where most combat drones fly. General Hecker believes the technology is now viable at about 10,000 feet and radar can monitor altitude without ground clutter. An example of a successful development was the Lviv startup Zvuk, which placed high-quality microphones near the city. The resulting recordings were used to train software to identify acoustic signatures of threats, ranging from small drones to missiles and aircraft with a crew without taking into account the sounds of civilian life.
Drones can be detected at a distance of up to 5 kilometers. For cruise missiles, the range is about 7 kilometers. To do this, Zvuk developed curved acoustic mirrors, half a meter in diameter, that concentrate sound waves on microphones. Zvuk detections typically appear in the Army's Delta computer program within 12 seconds. A much larger acoustic detection network has been developed by the secretive Ukrainian group called Sky Fortress. It consists of several thousand listening stations with thousands more planned. While its initial listening stations recorded and processed audio using Android smartphones, the network, like Zvuk, now uses special microphones and microcomputers. The data feeds into a Ukrainian command and control system known as Virage. Sky Fortress is largely funded by donations, an astonishing development for air defense. Russia is responding in kind. Talamco Design Bureau recently announced that its new Malik microphone system can protect Russian trenches and other positions by detecting Ukrainian drones from about 330 meters away. The smaller Malik system is attached to a soldier's uniform.